Welcome back into the locker room, everybody. I'm Drew Fry with the ever famous, beloved Mike Maz here for another edition of Tin Chat. And Mike, thanks for joining us again. Oh, it's my pleasure. Yeah, I was just talking tin caps this past past couple weeks even. They finally started to hit their stride a little bit against South Bend, so that you know that massive losing streak seems to be over, but it's kind of been inconsistent. It was a good week last week over in South Bend. Uh, Tin Caps won the first four games of the six-game series. Yeah. Got some outstanding uh, pitching. Got a couple of key home runs. Ethan Salas hit a couple of home runs in that series. Uh, nice to see him Joshua beat Mears went deep once when it, it counted. <laughs> uh, and then Saturday and Sunday, uh, Saturday South Bend came out literally for blood. They were ready to go yeah. from pitch number one and Sunday, the Tin Caps had a 2 nothing lead going into the bottom of the seventh. Uh, Cubs tied it with two in the seventh, and they sent 11 batters to the plate in the eighth. Scored five times, left the bases loaded, and they won 7-2. Uh, to two. But still, winning a series, um, it has not been something that Fort Wayne has done often this year. Yeah. They did take four out of seven in the series at Dayton early in the season. But they're playing a bit better. Uh, they're getting some better pitching. And part of it has to do with some of the call-ups. You remember the, yep. some of these new people, we've had eight different uh, players come up from Lake Elsinore. Yeah, so much roster turnover, just starting with the trade deadline yeah. and then going into a handful of guys getting promoted up to double A, needing the replacements to come in, a couple of you know, waiver, yeah. you know, waiver claims as well. But the personnel changeover, and uh, men, uh, meshing the guys that came up from Lake Elsinore with the guys who are still here in Fort Wayne. Right. Now, they, a lot of them did see each other in spring training, but now they are all collective teammates, and it takes the time uh, for that to gel. You know, two weeks ago, the team had a really rough series with West Michigan at home, losing five of six. Right. It's amazing what the off day on Monday can do to a team because yeah, big Tin Caps came point. out, new series at South Bend, and uh, they took four out of six. And uh, early in the season, they took five out of six from the Cubs here. And they will close the season out in three weeks with a six-game series against South Bend again here at Parkview Field. And at this point in the season, you know, I mean, playoffs – not ten caps aren't eliminated, but it's largely kind of understood at this point that that isn't really the main goal. But what sort of momentum can they try and build in these coming weeks? They've got to continue to build on playing well together. I had a chance to sit down for a good uh, bit talking with manager Mike Daly, and uh, one of the questions I asked him: How crazy was it when you had all this changeover? in a very short period of time. Yeah, from a managerial perspective, that's got to be so tough to navigate, almost a minefield. And he made comment the fact that, that some of the, these guys saw each other back in Arizona in March, and now it's just getting reacquainted with them. They're all here for one reason, to play the best baseball they can in hopes of getting promoted like several others have been so far this year. Yeah. So you also have to throw that five-letter word pride into the equation. You have to take pride in yourself, in your ability to play this game of baseball. You got to take pride in working with and rooting for your teammates. And when you get a chance to play spoiler, and you still know that you have to perform well, because um, I'll use the term big brother, i.e. the San Diego brass, yep. they're going to be looking at how these players are doing. You want to see the best effort. And uh, let's see if the Tin Caps can inflict a little bit more damage on the dragon, uh, Dragons before they head out next week for their final road trip of the year. Uh, six games in Peoria, followed by six games in Lansing. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned the pride not only in your own game, but there is that pride element in playing spoiler and in, you know, showing the other team, hey, we may not have the same winning record that you do, but we should be taken seriously just as well. Yeah. You can only win one game at a time. You don't think about what's ahead, you think about what's at hand. Right. And those are wise words. You know, we, we talk about a 130 game, 32 game season at this level in the Midwest League. Nobody's ever going to go 132 and 0. 
Exactly. Everyone That's is going to get goes. beat. Yeah. yeah, everyone is going to get beat and beat several times. Yeah. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, if you play well together and you get uh, a little bit of lady luck as well, uh, you can win more than you lose. Yeah, that's and how winning streaks form. It's not about I plan to win the next 12 games. Yeah. It's I plan to win tomorrow and then tomorrow and then tomorrow, yeah. so on and so forth. But you have to do it one game at a time. Exactly. And those were great words that Mike gave to me. The team can only play one game at a time. Yeah. And I hope the players realize that. Yeah. Well, looking ahead to these upcoming games, I yeah. know there's a handful of milestones that players can set. There's a handful of you know, little sparks that some of these players are trying to get. I know Salas has been swinging the bat for power a little bit more. Joshua Mears really heating up from what he was doing earlier in the summer. What are some of those like checkpoints that we're going to be watching for? Let's start with Joshua Mears. It is so good to see him finally playing what I call within himself. This is his third time around. He has nine home runs this year. He has 32 in his 10 cap career. That is two home runs shy of the franchise record set by Jake Patterson, who was a left hand hitting and throwing first baseman and sometime outfielder. Patterson hit 14 home runs in 1995. He had 20 home runs in 1997. Kai Murphy uh, leads the team in games played. Yeah, he's been and a real consistent piece. I believe piece. he, uh, heading into play tonight, he's played in 97 games, most of anybody on top. It may not sound like much, but when you can say that you played more games than anybody else on the team in a particular year, that tells you, amongst other things, that the coaches have faith in you. Yep, they can rely on you, you're a workhorse, yeah. you're never really causing problems, you're always you know, that dependable piece. Correct. And then you look at some of the pitchers uh, who have, have come up from Lake Elsinore. There's a couple that have been here this year. Again, there are over 20 opportunities left to show what they can do. And this will have a bearing, believe it or not, on what happens in 2025. Right. Because if you can finish with a good taste in your mouth, knowing you've given it a good shot at the end of this season, I guarantee you, uh, the San Diego Brain Trust will notice that, and if you can parlay that with a good spring training next March, that could help in where you'll start the season of 2025 at. And that, that's one thing that I hope the non-pitchers on this team will take to heart during the off season. San Diego will put out a conditioning program, but I hope that some of these guys go to batting cages or whatever. Look at some of the basics, you know, go back. If you need to work on conditioning, that's one thing. If you need to work on your footwork, uh, especially like infielders, uh, what little time I played when I played baseball in the infield, you're on your toes because you've got to be ready to go left or right at exactly, a moment's yeah. notice. Uh, you get a little bit of a break in the outfield. So that mental aspect still very yeah, important. Yeah, and the mental part of it, yeah, that's another area yeah. You have to have the mental belief that you can do the job. If you can do it, you're halfway there. Yeah, game in and game out, no matter yeah. if the team's on a hot streak or if you're already eliminated, which they're not yet, but yeah. we could see that soon. You still have to be able to go you, each You each still step. want to be able to play your best at all times. Still are some things to play for over the final three plus weeks of the, se of the yeah, season. Yeah, definitely, and that's gonna be something that we'll be following along over these next few weeks. I think that's gonna do it for our edition of Tin Chat in here today, but Mike, thanks for joining us again, and we look forward to seeing how these next few weeks play out. I agree with you 100%. All right, sounds good. That's gonna do it for this Tin Chat, and we'll be back from our locker room after the break.